producing the minerals and metals for electric cars and their batteries it does extract an environmental toll like any other mining. Earlier today, we heard from Ron McDonald, president and CEO of Zinc 8 Energy Solutions. He gave us his thoughts on using zinc for energy storage instead of metals that may be more harmful to extract. We use a, a, a closed loop zinc air technology. Um, I, I guess the basics of it, number one is uh, that it's safe. Uh, there's no thermal runaway and we see that even two days ago in the news with some of the other techs like lithium uh, that have major problems with thermal runaway. Um, our, we are the most cost competitive in the long duration market. Uh, we use zinc, which is plentiful, so we have no geopolitical risk like nickel or, or rare earths or, or lithium or even vanadium. So we check a lot of boxes there. We're about to enter into our commercialization phase in 2023, uh, and we couldn't be going in at a better time because, you know, the CAG era market estimates between now and 2000 and say 25, 24 and 25, range from 28 to 34 percent. So I think that we're perfectly poised to enter what is a rapidly expanding market for energy storage, not just for EVs, but for behind the grid and uh, and uh, grid level storage. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, beyond ele electric vehicles, which get uh, all of the attention in this space these days, what, what are the other uh, applications for energy storage that you're working towards? Well, interestingly, I mean, we're, we are a large battery, so we're six hours and above. We used to say we're eight hours and above, but because of the recent dramatic spikes in commodity prices, we're now competitive at five hours to to uh, technologies like lithium. Uh, but, but we play uh, behind the meter, peak shaving. In a city like New York, uh, really important uh, because of Local Law 97, uh, they've come out and said that any building over 25,000 square foot uh, must reduce their carbon footprint by about 35 percent by 2030 and up to 80 percent by 2035. So there's things that you need to do. And one of the things that you can do is load shifting and not only saves money for the consumer at the back end, uh, but it also hopefully will make available carbon credits because most of the power that you would store in the battery, you buy at night, store in the battery and use it during the uh, the daytime uh, should have a healthy carbon credit as well, which will go a long way to helping. Uh, there's there's 59,000 buildings that are captured by this local law, but it'll go a long way to help them uh, meet the regulations that are required, as well as grid level and microgrid. They're the three major uh, markets for us. Okay, zinc has got to be one of your key input costs, and zinc prices, as you well know, are very close to all-time highs. Uh, what is your read on zinc and the other metals that are in demand because of the uh, shift to uh, greener technologies. Well, it's pretty interesting, right? There's there's not many times that uh, a user or commodity says, "I'm glad it's up by 41 percent," uh, but it's all comparative. So, in our battery, the zinc that we use, which is plentiful, no supply chain issues, we can everything we build in our battery can be sourced out of the United States or probably 50 other countries. Um, so we don't have the geopolitical uh, risk, but. The overall amount of uh, product that we put in on the metal side is less than 8% of our total capital cost. So we've gone up about, uh, I think uh, uh, the high was uh, 70 five percent year over year we're down to about 40 percent now so it has moderated in all the commodity prices but if you look at lithium carbonate uh, lithium carbonate this it's only in this market that that this would be a good news story it was up 690 percent year over year it's moderate it's now up 632 percent and so so if you look at it relative and if you look at vanadium vanadium uh it's it was about 140 it's down to about 96 now normally a good news story for the consumer of those metals except that in the case of a vanadium redox flow battery instead of eight percent for zinc as the input cost they're about 70 percent so it has a much bigger impact to the consumer on the back end for the products that they produce so on the commodity side uh, yeah we, we will be impacted but the, our competitors our major competitors are impacted much more heavily and it's going to continue that way, particularly over with lithium. This is a story that's not going to end at where they're at at $632 currently today. This is going to continue. Uh, the uh, the very aggressive policies by governments around the world, particularly the U.S. government, towards uh, going over to uh, EV production. And I'm looking, like I just saw an F-150 ad this morning. Sorry for the ad. I don't own one. Uh, the most popular truck in America. Uh, do you see anything about their combustion engine truck going for it? Everything is EV, electric vehicle, and the price points are really, really, really good right now. So what that tells me is that just on EV conversion, by all of the majors to billions and billions of dollars, that train is not going to slow down. It's going to grow. It's going to put increasing 
uh, um, pressure on the supply chains for lithium and nickel and other things that go into their battery and graphite. And so, you know, I think that the, the issue is not going to be the growth of the EV industry. It's going to be the, the uh, supply management of materials and the cost of those materials to produce those. Well, I think let's talk, it, let's talk a bit about supply. Your view on, on uh, the pricing of the metals is largely based on the demand side. Now, history tells us that uh, mining companies, big mining giants who are capable of either producing new zinc or new nickel or expanding their existing production of it can do so. Now, it also, history also tells us that that takes time. It, they can't simply flip a, f a switch to do so. But surely a sustained period of historically high prices will bring more product onto the market. Uh, there is a fundamental disconnect here. I've been in the mining sector for 20 years, and from the time uh, somebody kicks a rock and says, I think it's nickel or I think it's uh, lithium, to the time that one of 30 actually permits to a mine, that's about the number, is about 15 years. So, you know, and I don't see governments uh, anywhere in the world uh, lessening their requirements for environmental assessments on any mining site. It, you know, if anything, it's increasing monthly or, or daily almost in different jurisdictions. So um, anybody that thinks that they can quickly ramp up a, a, a deposit uh, to a, a producer is mistaken. It's going to take 15 years, um, and you'd have to probably license 50% of the ones that are out there. That is not going to happen. That's just not the history of the regulator. So there's going to be a crunch here, and I think it's going to continue to, to push up high prices, not just now, but for the next 15 years uh, until the supply and the demand meet, and that's going to be a tough one, but it's going to be at a higher price. Ron McDonald joined us talking to our own Paul Bagnall. Uh, he is president and CEO at Zinc 8 Energy Solutions.